Good evening, everybody. The word of the Lord says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard coming down upon the edge of his robe. It's like the dew of Hermon coming down upon the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forever. Y'all, tonight we're so glad that you're here. Thank you for coming to First Baptist Church, the community uh, Thanksgiving service. We're glad that you're here. One of the things that we're going to do this evening is that we're going to take an offering in just a little bit. Know that that's going to go towards the uh, Chester uh, Food Pantry, and they're in desperate need this year. Y'all didn't take much look around. We're in tough shape, and there's a lot of hurting people out there. So for those of you who brought canned goods, at a boy, at a girl, uh, but we're also going to take a, a, an offering in just a little bit. You'll see the plates go around uh, whenever they get to you. But we're going to we're going to open up the service in prayer, and we're going to uh, we're going to worship. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we're, uh, we're, we're honored to be in your house tonight, Father. It's beautiful and wonderful and precious to be together with brothers and sisters, to be with the family of God. Uh, what a rich blessing it is, Father, and because of you, uh, we're not Jew or Gentile or male or female. We're not uh, slave or master, but Father, you've made us one in Christ, and we give you praise and glory and honor, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Aren't you glad to be a part of the family of God? Let's worship the Lord. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Let's sing that again, church. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by your blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is you know what? Let's do that chorus with just the voices, okay? On Christ's solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. His oath, His covenant, His blood support me in the... Chorus. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Let's sing that last, that fourth verse, good and loud, church. Let's shake the windows. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Here we go. On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground. Hey. 
I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise His holy name. I love. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise His holy name. I'll tell you why. For oh, He's my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my soul, my shield. He's a
Give thanks for the good days. When the traffic lights all turn green, when promotions come and bad habits are broken. Give thanks for warm meals and the company of friends. Give thanks, give thanks for coffee and clothing and hope that the two never mix. Give thanks for the mother who battles daily in prayer, for the father working three jobs, for the brothers and sisters who build blanket forts and read bedtime stories. Give thanks for sons and daughters and all our family who remind us of what truly matters. Give thanks for the stranger who holds the door open and the lifelong friend who holds you when life is broken. Give thanks for the hard days, for the phone call that brings life crashing down for jobs lost and friendships fallen into conflict. Give thanks for the anger that reminds us we are human and the tears that express more than words can ever fathom. Give thanks, though the pain is overwhelming, your energy spent, your spirit fallen, and your only option is to fall to your knees before your Holy Father and cry out, God, please help me. 
For in that moment, his power is made perfect. His love is made evident. He becomes your strength, your comfort, and your salvation. Give thanks for the power of redemption, from Genesis to Revelation, for the endless promises of a God who would rather sacrifice his son than give up on his children. For nail-pierced hands, for brilliant dawns, for the cool touch of rain and the simplicity of a quiet day. For all things great and small, let us give thanks. There was a church um, in Asia Minor that they were in a service like this and they would come together for the Lord's Supper like we have tonight. And what they did is they went to the church and they talked about anything and everything but what they should have been talking about. They talked about politics, they talked about the weather, they talked about culture, they talked about entertainment, they talked about the government. And so Paul had to write a letter to these folks because when they came there they were focused on everything except the focus of the service which was on Jesus and and Paul had to get on to him he says this is a special service it's, it's communion it's the Lord's Supper and it's an interesting concept because that whole idea of communion us coming together as a body but also coming together with Christ in a, a very special moment you know a husband and wife are together their whole life in, in holy matrimony but those special moments of intimacy are unique um, they're special they're beautiful when we look at the Lord's Supper when we look at the, the totality of who we are in Christ in our Christian life this is one of those unique intimate moments it's special it should be uh, set aside it should be intimate this is a family supper uh, if you're a Christian this is for you when I say Christian it means that you realize that you've messed up you're a sinner and that Jesus died in your place for you on the cross and his blood washes away your sin and you, you've claimed your you've claimed your reward and you've placed your faith in him this is a family meal this is a meal that families invited to but not only that it's it's a meal that shows that we are a Christian family but the first text I read tonight is how beautiful it is to come together when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. Man, this is a meal we come to, not as that denomination or that church or that church. Man, we come together tonight as the church. And we celebrate this because we are one in Christ. And so, y'all, we're one in Christ because we've entered into a new covenant, a new relationship, a new bond with God when we come into the relationship with Christ. We walk with him differently than we did before. We are now in agreement. We are now in a new contract with God. It's a special relationship. Uh, I want to read this passage to you, then we'll go on. For I received from the Lord... This is that letter that Paul wrote to that church that was focusing in on politics and everything else but Jesus. He says, this is I received the Lord which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said. I, I want to go back on that. He had given thanks. We've read that verse a million times, but I think in the spirit of thanksgiving, I think it's important. that I, Let me do a little bit of a tweak on that word thanks. The, the Greek word there is Eucharist or Eucharuso. Uh, it means grateful. It means gratitude. It means I'm so thankful. And I begin to think about that. And I think Jesus is there breaking bread that represents his body that's about to die on the cross, pouring wine out of a bottle that represents his blood that's about to be shed on Calvary. And yet the words from Jesus' precious lips are thank you. Even in a night before he dies, he still finds gratitude to the Father. Church, as we take this tonight, I want to remind you of, of what Jesus did to ransom us, to pay for us. Of course, the, the two elements in this beautiful meal is the bread and the wine. The bread represents the body of Jesus. It represents what hung on the cross. It represents the slashes and the gashes and the bruising and the tearing. And the Bible says, by his stripes were healed. 
Y'all, tonight, if you've got a physical infirmity, a mental infirmity, a infirmity of your spirit, when you take the communion cracker tonight, when you take the bread, ask for healing. Ask for healing. Ask for your wholeness, no matter what. You know what? God is bigger than any cancer. He's bigger than Alzheimer's. He's bigger than diabetes. He's bigger than your finances. So give it to him. The cup represents the blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness of sin. And so that's how we come into that new relationship, by this blood. So church, I encourage you, if you would, open up the top of your bottom, get the cracker out. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the precious body of your son Jesus, which was hung on Calvary in our place instead of us, so that we could be renewed, restored, saved, redeemed, and live forever with you. Thank you so much for the powerful love on the cross. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, And if you'll turn your cup over and open up that lid. In the same way he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant. It's in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Almighty God, we want to thank you for the blood that was shed for us on Calvary. We thank you, Father, for the sin-removing principles the sin-removing power of the blood. And Jesus, I pray that tonight your children have come together in right aim and right purpose as we celebrate this Eucharist, as we celebrate this Lord's table. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. As the team's coming up, I want to leave you with one last thought. That next verse is this. It says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's uh, you, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. Now, church, who are we? We're already on the team. Who are we proclaiming to? This is an evangelistic message, but it, this was something said to the church when they were having communion. This is my take on it. Who do we proclaim to? Well, I think number one, we can we proclaim to the world every time we take this cup that we serve a risen Savior, that death has been defeated, that hell has been overcome. By the blood of Jesus. So we proclaim to the world about our Jesus. And by the way, wouldn't you love to trust Him? Wouldn't you love to have Him in your life? Wouldn't you want that resurrection power? But I'm going to tell you what else. As we, ta as we take that Lord's cup, we also proclaim to the devil and the demons of hell that your time's limited. You're defeated. You better get ready because judgment's coming. And I think the third person that, this remind, that I need to remind is myself that, hey... The Lord is coming back. No matter how bad things look here, the good news is that He will come back. And we'll do this until He comes again. So I'm very thankful for that. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Love you. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you. Hey there. <laughs> All right. Hey, is anybody here in this place tonight thankful? Anybody? I'll tell you. I, I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful that we can come together as one body and not Grace Church on one end of town and First Baptist Church on the other end of town. I love you, Pastor. This place is built on a solid foundation. And that's what we need for the times that we're in now. Amen, church. I don't know if you've noticed it, but it's getting a little rough out there. But if we build our house on the solid rock, when the storms come, it's not going to affect you. It's not going to tear your house down because it's built on Jesus. Amen. So Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never
never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? He won't He won't I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense so I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength cause I built my life on Jesus and he's never let me down he's faithful through every season so why would he fail
lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh, yeah. 
you so much for coming. I'm going to close this in a word of prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Dear God, you were so good. Thank you for just giving us a community of people that we can just worship you with, God. We just come together and just thank you. Be grateful for you, for everything that you've done for us, God. Father, thank you for giving us unity in a time and in a world where this unity is so present. Father, we thank you for that. I ask this in your holy son's name. And amen. Hey, y'all, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock right here at this church, we are doing a community Thanksgiving dinner. And if you don't have any plans tomorrow night at 6, we invite you to come. Thank you.